Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on this Epiphany Sunday. It's a beautiful day out today, and we are blessed to have you here to worship the Lord today. I'd like to draw your attention to some announcements. Obviously, we have our virtual worship service every Sunday, and we see you here uh, on Zoom this morning, and you can also watch it on YouTube, as well as Facebook later today after Dennis posts it uh, this evening. So welcome. Uh, We have some meetings coming up. If you see them on this little list here, attend your meeting. So, yay. (laughs) And then uh, we also have the upper room available in the church office, and that's for January and February. And then you can uh, either pick those up in the office, arrange that with Michelle, or she can go ahead and mail them out to you. Please join me in the responsive reading. The new dawn will arise upon you. You shall see and be radiant. The new dawn will arise upon you. The Holy One will bless the people with peace. The new dawn will rise upon you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Emmanuel, give us the perseverance and courage to seek out and approach you wherever you are to be found. Grant us the vision and understanding to see and recognize you whenever we might meet you. Gift us the grace and the generosity to respond freely and fully whatever you might ask of us. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now in the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. Sung throughout all of history, call to be like to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to tender the song. Not in the dark of buildings confining, Not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our
Please join me in the offertory prayer. Gracious God, in wisdom, you provide every gift needed to build up this church. You continually guide the church in every place by your spirit. O Lord, we praise you for your constant care. We are grateful that you have claimed us as your own, that we belong to you as part of your people. Thank you so much for drawing us to this congregation where we share in worship and study, where we share in friendship and service with others who love you. Let our lives be useful for your purposes. We gladly give our tithes and offerings as a sign of the joy you give us to share with the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Happy New Year! So good to see you all. Um, I hope uh, everybody receive a blessed New Year uh, with hope and lots of peace and lots of strength for 2021. So um, I would like to ask you to pray for Olivia this morning and also Barb uh, Pinkston. Both of them uh, were supposed to be here to serve the worship, but they are under a little weather today, so please keep them in your prayers. And Julius, please uh, take away for sharing the joys and concerns. All right, thank you, Pastor. Well, welcome to Joys and Concerns. As usual, if you could just grab my attention by waving your hand, we'll call on you and you can invite to, to open your mic and share your concerns or joys. Any joys and concerns? There's the barn hills. Go ahead, Don Lemon. Just a sec. Um, just need prayers for the Logans. Olivia, Adela, Mike, and Jeff. Uh, they're all suffering from symptoms of COVID. And Adela's mother is still in the hospital with COVID on oxygen. So it's kind of iffy. Wow. They're going to be tested tomorrow, but they're symptomatic right now. Oh, my. Okay. So certainly prayers for the, the greater Logan clan there. For sure. yeah. Thank you for sharing. Any other joys and concerns? Well, I have one while we're kind of waiting for folks. Um, I start a new job on Monday. I ended my old job on Friday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so a new beginning for me. The other thing is uh, joy and concern. Um, Marcy started having some symptoms of COVID oh. last week. And um, so we were very, uh, very afraid. Um, but, uh, but she got tested and her results came back negative. So uh, oh. very 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 yeah thankful for uh for that so yeah that's something new that's happened in our family this week any other joys and concerns it's a new year everybody's fired up two years of 2021 we can use a good good <laughs> year uh, the bowman's hey fran and 
You can unmute your mic there, Fran. Go ahead. I know. I always forget to unmute. Yes. Um, so we've been praying for my neighbor, Don, and um, he passed away last night. Uh -huh. So uh, please pray for his wife, Colleen, and for their whole family. Sure. Prayers for Colleen and prayers for the passing of Don. Yeah. Any other joys and concerns? Always good to see folks from out of town. Robin's great to see you. Okay, I think Pastor, it's back to you. Thank you. And um, so congratulations, uh, Julius, for a new job. Uh, praying for uh, many, many success. And uh, we have a wonderful pianist, Alo Baxter. He, he has been uh, playing uh, during this uh, break, but he's going to go back to Wisconsin for the second semester tomorrow. So we are praying for his uh, wonderful second semester and coming back safely uh, in March. Okay, and Dave Funk uh, is going to have the last week of uh, treatment. Uh, so tomorrow will be the last chemo, uh, uh, several more days with uh, radiation. So keep him and his family in your prayers continually. And Carrie Hutchison, uh, he has come back from uh, hospital and now he's in, at, at home but he will be in a hospice um, care. So please uh, keep Carrie and Diane Hutchison and the family in your prayers. Anybody, you wanna, okay. Hello everyone, I just wanted to ask for prayers, uh, especially for friends of ours. Um, they lost their daughter. Um, she was full term stillborn and uh it was a freak uh court accident so just prayers for them uh it's a very very hard it happened right before christmas so we would just love for you to pray for them and the ending on a joy it was great that james got to come home for christmas and now he's back in reno so Okay, let us continue to pray for our loved ones and neighbors. Uh, this will be our continuing ministry always, prayer ministry always, always. Let's do that um, in our new year. And we will begin our prayers with uh, silence. Breathing in the breath of God and breathe out, Lord, in your mercy. Breathe in the Spirit of God. Breathe out, Lord, in your love. Breathe in the breath of God. Breathe out, Lord, we follow you. We love you. Please join me in praying for all these people, for the healing and strength um, in silence. Continue to pray for healing and strength for the sick and also for the homebound. Oh God, this morning we add two more families who have lost their loved ones. Becca's friend and all her family as they grieve for the loss 
of the baby. We lift up the neighbor of Bowman family, John, and also his wife, Colin, and the family members as they grieve. We also lift up Dave Fung for continuing healing. Also praying for Carrie Hutchison and the whole Logan family, oh God. And all those who are struggling and dealing with COVID. Let us continue to pray for the safety and strength for all the medical workers. Also for the firefighters, police officers, soldiers, and school workers, and our Hope House volunteers. O oh, merciful God, as we move forward into a new year, we ask you to bless all of us that we may receive new heart and new eyes, new ears, so that we can see your new creation in our familiar lives. We ask you to bless all for whom the ear is not being looked forward to. We think of people who are ill and fearful of what the ear will bring. We think of all who have family difficulties and are concerned as to how to serve them. We think of all for whom the new year is bringing money problems and all who are fearful for their jobs. Lord, for us, all the future is unknown. So help us to have a strong faith to trust in you, the wisdom to do the right thing and to be guided by you constantly. Remind us, Lord, that you always keep your promises. Remind us too that they are kept in your time and not ours. Whatever the ear holds, may we never lose sight of you, since you are always with us. In the gracious, loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Good morning. Yay, it's a new year, 2021. Please feel free to sing along with us if you would like. Thank you, Joe and Joy. That was wonderful. Uh, today's scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, 
and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for this service today. Thanks be to God. So the last Sunday, we, uh, we read a story about Simeon and Anna. Through their story, God was revealed as a God who would never send awful things like a pandemic to punish us for our sins. God would never desire sufferings for us in order to teach us some lessons. Our God is revealed as a God who does not depend on human suffering to teach us or to achieve his purpose. So we know that in the course of our lives, things happen, difficulties show up, and we face sufferings. In those times, our God always is with us and always helps us to be wiser and stronger and more forgiving, understanding, just like his son Jesus is. So through sufferings, we, we may all grow with the grace of God, with the help of God, and our wisdom and strength may be increased. With God's grace, in spite of all hardships, our faith may be strengthened even in our darkest times. So that was the revelation that we learned uh, last Sunday through the story of Simeon and Anna. And today, on this Epiphany Sunday, God is more fully revealed. It is through the story of the Magi. I'd like to call them uh, the Magi instead of the wise men or the kings, because you never know whether they were all men or women, right? They are in mystery, and the Bible doesn't say anything about it. So even though they were very likely men, um, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny possibility that they uh, could be women. So what would have happened if they, there had been three wise women instead of three wise men. The three wise women would have asked for directions, arrived on time, and helped deliver the baby, and cleaned the stable, and made a casserole, and given more practical gifts like diapers or a special baby formula or anything uh, that they could thought of. Well, they are in mystery. These magi, whether women or men, they're very fascinating characters. They are quiet, magnificent, and mysterious. The Magi fascinate us because they do not fit into this tiny stage of hill village and humble stable. Their sophistication, sophistication 
clashes with this simplicity. Their prestige sits uneasily beside the vulnerability of child and the family. They are kind of urban in a rural world, affluent in the midst of poverty. But they were welcomed to our holy nativity scene. Why? The Magi belong to the nativity because they represent the whole unknown world beyond the locals, beyond the Jewish alone world. So they were uniquely Gentiles, non-Jews in our Christmas story. Mary and Joseph were Jewish. The shepherd were Jewish. Even the evil King Herod and even baby Jesus, they were all Jewish. But the Magi came from an unknown, unknown world. We don't know their nationalities, their cultures, or even religious identities. We have no idea. But they appeared and joined in this small nativity scene at the end of the story. So their unusual presence boldly announces that this blessed child belongs to the whole world. The Christ child belongs never just to any certain membership of any particular faith tradition. Their presence reveals that our God is a God who blesses all people on the earth through the work of Jesus Christ. Christ baby, Christ is for everyone, everywhere. So religious conflict, conflicts have caused major wars and sufferings to the humankind, humanity, throughout history. But those conflicts were never what our loving God wanted to see. As the creator of the whole universe, he has loved and redeemed and nurtured all creatures in existence. We know from the Bible, God blessed not only Isaac, the son of Abraham, the uh, ancestor of Judaism and Christianity, but also Ishmael, Abraham's another son, the ancestor of Islam. In Genesis 17, it is written, God answered to Abraham that Ishmael has been blessed and that God will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. God wanted both Isaac and Ishmael to be blessed in this world. God also blessed not only the Israelites, but also Egyptians, 
and Assyrians. Both were enemies of the Israelites for quite some time. But it is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verses 23 to 25, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, my inheritance. Egypt was a land of slavery to the Israelites. Assyria was a land of oppression. So the prophet Jonah, we all know that Jonah refused to serve Assyrian people when he was called by God to deliver his good news of salvation for the Assyrians. Egypt and Assyria had their own gods, their own religions, but it did not stop our God from loving them and blessing them. Our Lord Jesus loved not only Judeans, but also Samaritans, Canaanites, and even Romans, national enemy at the time. Jesus was just like God. God and Christ loved all people in this world. Our God so loved the world the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Our creator, loving God, wants us to see people of other faith as partners in ministries instead of competitive rivals or religious enemies. It is ridiculous if we keep fighting amongst us when our God, our Creator, loves all of us with the same grace and truth. So are we seeing them as our partners in ministry. Are we there yet? Well, a Catholic um, priest says to a rabbi, Jewish rabbi, it seems to me that uh, since the Creator made pork, he must have made it for some purpose. Therefore, it must be a sin not to use it, don't you think? So, uh, will you finally eat some pork? The rabbi replies, Well, I will try some, Father, at your wedding. <laughs> yeah, friendly jokes like this very helpful to break down tensions between different religions and traditions. We need to go deeper in our faith journey where our God is leading us in this world with his unimaginable grace and love. Where are we going? Today, the Magi reminds us that Jesus did not come for just a small group of people in Palestine. He came to be the light of the world. The Magi 
came from far away, challenging us to be open and compassionate toward those who come into our midst from other places. As Jesus said, we are also the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Not just local, not just our own traditions, but also beyond local locals, beyond, beyond our own. So like the Magi, let us bow our knees and give to the Lord our best. Our open hearts, open minds, and open doors, and open houses. That way we can join in this epiphany journey of the Magi here and now. Amen. Let us have a silent prayer as we prepare our hearts for the Holy Communion for a minute. Brothers and sisters, come to the Lord's table, all you who love him and all you who confess your sins and wish to make peace with God and with one another. Let us, let us join in the prayer of confession together. Most, most holy and most, most loving God, God we, we admit, admit to, to you and, and to each other that, that we are creatures who either through foolishness or willfulness often choose darkness instead of light. Here and now, we surrender to you our fears and proud opinions, our short-sighted folly and our pompous wisdom our deep-seated sins and our, and our apathy towards change and renewal. Please, Please forgive the darkness, darkness and pain we have inflicted on others and restore, restore the light star hopes and, and ideas within our own souls. Trusting Trust your grace, we honestly pray, pray. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. My friends, Epiphany is good news. The light comes not to sear and blind us, but to save us. Christ Jesus came into this world to forgive our sins. Our sins are forgiven. So thanks be to God. Let us take up our forgiveness with thanksgiving and live without shame or anxiety because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
enable us. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are our God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. is your son Jesus Christ in whom you have revealed yourself our light and our salvation you sent a star to guide wise men the Magi to where the Christ was born and in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world you have led your people from far places to his light by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 As you know, the communion is a means of grace, a very special way to experience God's presence, His forgiveness, and all other gifts and promises made in Jesus Christ for everybody in the world. So our table is open for everybody. And you can use any juice or cracker or a piece of bread from your kitchen to participate in this holy mystery. Let us receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. body of Christ broken for you, blood of Christ shed for you. Please join me in prayer after communion. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join us uh, in the closing hymn. Thanks to Larry Sheffer, who has been today, Olivia, and also Barb Pinkston, and offering beautiful, <coughs> calming voice. Let us sing. is a day of new beginnings, time to remember and move on, time to believe what love is bringing, laying to rest the 
pain that's gone. For by the life and death of Jesus, God's mighty spirit now as then can make for us a world of difference as faith and hope are born again. In faith we'll gather round the table to taste and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, let us go from here in much confidence, knowing that the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion and the presence, presence of the Holy Spirit is always, always with us, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. One more time. Peace be with you. 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 <laughs>